Okay, what's up YouTube? Back at you guys with a, another video and hope you guys are having a good day and uh today we are working on my homemade gas air compressor. I just made a video about this like yesterday and uh the reason I'm making another video on it right now because that video didn't go very in depth on it and you couldn't really hear me in it because this thing's so loud. So I'm just going to do a full update about it. So let's start off with why I have the motor from the generator on it and there's no generator anywhere. So I took and decided to build this instead of the generator. The generator is really big. Had a uh had like a really giant it was just hard to explain if you guys haven't seen it big. I ended up taking the basic board and it, this is like the board it sat on this one. And if this shelf gives you any uh idea, this shelf's about eh, fit, like 45 or 50 inches long so it was pretty huge and it just took up a ton of room not saying this is going to take up less room but it will it's a little shorter so uh, the reason I built this instead of the generator too is also and more use for an air compressor that I could take outside and you know, do stuff with instead of a generator so this will run I built this to run air guns and nailers and stuff and and also fill up tires because see I got an air tank over there but it only has like a fraction of the air I need especially whenever I have to go put a bead back on the tire out in the field so so yeah, I built this. It isn't done. Don't worry, I didn't build it all the way without making any updates on it. I've just been really busy and haven't really been able to film. So yeah, that's much. I mean, I filmed, but I just haven't had time to edit it all. And then I just got caught up last night. So so let's start off with this tank. This tank is a uh i can't tell you how many gallons but it's an old sears air compressor made by devilbus here's the information tag right there hopefully you can see this read for 120 50 psi max but no way i'm putting this thing up to 120 i mean i yeah, 50 psi 150 psi because this thing was built in 1981. So. And then, so I just had a bear tank because my the air compressor we use in the barn here, over there, we used to have this motor and regulator and pu that pump and everything you see there on that tank there, but we thought it leaked because it had a giant JB weld repair right there. Like, and, uh, so we thought, and it did weak air there, so we thought it was that, and we couldn't fix it. So, we ended up, my dad ended up getting that tank that doesn't leak from the buddy, and, uh, we, we switched everything off this tank to that tank. And then this tank just kind of sat around in my shed for the next couple years, until, this year, about a month ago, I started this project, and it sat on there, it sat since then, and I took in, so I just had a tank, it's a bear tank, nothing, and except a motor, and pulley, and some belts, and stuff like bearing, just kind of little, this is just, like this tensioner I completely cobbled out of, stuff I had laying around here, and but anyway, this pump, I know I need an air filter for it. Um, this pump 
I traded it for a bunch of scrap metal I used to have sitting there for my, with my grandpa that had it. And I took that, put it on here, and it's the same pump as that air compressor over there has. Exact same identical stinking pump. So I didn't have to drill or any holes or anything. Mounted into the original ones, and this one just flipped the other way because it... The gas motor turns that way, and yeah, so pump's good. And but the motor, when it came to that, that was a lot harder to install. I had to make that own little air gauge concoction right there, and do that. I had to, I didn't have any hose enough to run out here and then wrap back into there, so I had to use this old hydro. Well, not old, brand new, but this hydraulic hose we had. So I'm going to change out for like a copper hose to put straight to there because it leaks in here really bad. So, like, it just won't tighten since it's not a hydraulic fitting. It only pumps up to 80 PSI right now because of that leak. But it'll hold air pressure because the check valve in there works good. So, this is a... Uh, this motor, I've never gone over this motor. It's been on the channel a couple times, but I've never gone over it. It's a Wisconsin heavy-duty industrial engine. I bought it off Facebook Marketplace from a guy for $65. And runs good. And But it's not a Wisconsin engine because it's aluminum block. And anybody knows anything about Wisconsin's? They're cast iron, they're heavy and everything. This is actually a Subaru Robin engine just sold to Wisconsin and rebranded. So, but that's a good engine too. Wisconsin, uh, I mean, Subaru makes good industrial en engines too. So, and then I have it going this routed to the tank. And that's it, really. Oh, well, yeah. I was going to talk about the mounting. The mounting was a part that kind of sucked because I had to, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Um, this motor sitting on a piece on halfway on here and halfway off and that was the issue I had. So what I did to fix that was I took it had a piece of quarter inch angle iron sitting around. The exact same piece there. And uh, I took and cut that to length and then cut the, then cut it in half vertically. So well, I had two plates out of it. And then I welded them, tank, and them plates directly as a bead right on there to put a bead on every side of it one right down the middle and it ain't going anywhere so that's how i mounted the motor and then i had to slot it so i could slide it back and forth but so that's how that works and then also you guys might be wondering why i have this big belt and tensioner and stuff and no and a this on a non V belt pulley because this here, this uh, air compressor came original with a serpentine belt on it, and it wouldn't run. Had it going from the motor to here, and I don't. I'm not personally. I don't like serpentine belts. I know they don't slip, but. To me, I think they, if you have the alignment out just a teeny weeny bit, it will jump the belt, and it's hard to get them aligned right. So, I just wanted to try this, and uh, I had this pulley already for the motor, and I took this belt that I had on hand and ran it around here onto there, and uh, I put this tensioner on here and took it and then had to weld this brace to it so it wouldn't do it go anywhere and all this tensioner is for a wheel is just a bearing just this 
bearing I had off of a snowboard that was still good. And, and it still, and all I did was just put the bearing there, slotted that, and I just won't put the bearing and it works great. I had to do a little bit of lining, which was really tedious to get it perfect, but now it's pretty darn good. It rides, the belt rides about right in the center of that. So, so that's really all I have to go over with it. Works all right right now, but I, like I said, I have to re re just configure my hose into there but other than that it's still functional and yeah so that's, that's sorry about me just rambling this whole video i'm not going to start it up in this video i don't feel like wheeling it out so and starting it but if you want to see it running check out yesterday's video and that has it running and I haven't touched it since then so other than I have to fix the carburetor because I mean it runs good but if you let it sit for a minute with the gas on it starts puking out the back of the carburetor so I kind of have to fix the float in there so yep. as always well I guess I'm not going to leave just yet so. So yeah, so that's about all I have to talk about that. It's pretty simple. I mean, it took a few days worth of work, but. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention on the belt how this works, how good this works. This belt doesn't slip. Like, I got it really tight right now, but it doesn't slip at all. So, works perfect. So, okay, that's all. And as always, thank you for watching, and subscribe, please, and have a nice day. Oh, God.